school with him at USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's awesome. Thank he you was, so much. Welcome back before, to church, everybody. I. Happy New Year. <laughs> so glad to start 2022 <laughs> with all of you, you here you and had at like home, wherever you may be. We're while, gonna start our service right now by singing our opening chant, God is my source. time with with and now you have all of this extra support and we're just so happy for all of it so yes 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 so we are so glad that you've joined us here in person or on zoom or on Facebook so all of you who are here today God bless you for being here happy 2022 couple of things please make sure that you have silenced your cell phones and also, we are really, really doubling down on the mask wearing because we want to stay healthy. We don't want this to become a super spreader event at any point. So please keep your masks over your nose and your mouth. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and stay distanced. I think we're going to pray. All right, so let's just come together in this deep awareness of love, of kindness, of compassion, knowing that the truth is, there is only one power, one infinite presence. We call it God, we call it spirit, we call it love, whatever we call it. We know that we have been brought together in the intention to celebrate together our innate divinity, our wholeness, our love, our joy. And we know that in community, we recognize it for ourselves, we recognize it for each other. And I know that this day, this service unfolds with that high intention for love, for divine order, for great, wonderful spiritual perfection. So I know that the words that come through Dr. Mark are exactly what people need to hear. And I know that the music that Sam and the band brings to us and, and Susan, that all of this is just absolutely fantastic. We bless our crew. We bless our technology. We bless all of it. And I bless everybody in this room knowing that together, right where we are, God is and all is well. So knowing it is already so, I say, and so it is, and together we say, amen. Ah, we have a chant. Be still. Still and know that I 
Would you please stand and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let's stay standing and let's join together and sing our congregational song. Make a joyful noise, lift our voices to the sky. Joyful noise to your source and your supply. Celebrate as one. Grateful for this time we share. Celebrate as one. Unified as we declare. God is love. God is peace. God is joy. minutes in spiritual practice together so I invite you to get comfortable as we meditate and just follow the breath knowing that that is your deepest most imminent immediate connection to the truth of your being God and just breathe and allow this mantra to be that which guides you deeper into the truth of your own being 
God's the love that I am. And silently, just repeat that to yourself. God's the love that I am.
are so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side. Rainbows are visions, but only illusions, and rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told, and some choose to believe it. I know they're wrong, wait and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. said that every wish could be heard and answered when wished on the morning star. Somebody thought of that and someone believed it. And look what we've done so far. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing and what do we think we might see someday we'll find it the rainbow connection the lovers the dreamers and me all of us under its spell we know that it's probably mad sweet sound that calls the young sailors the voice might be one and the same I've heard it too many times to ignore it it's something that I'm supposed to be someday we'll find it the rainbow connection Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much. All right, good morning, and Happy New Year. Wasn't it good to bring that last year to a close? I mean, I just felt so done with that. I was just so happy to put it in the trash, the recycling, move on. So, new year and new you. That's what I'm talking about, hmm? And I think about that. How's that going to happen? Because, you know, on New Year's Eve, uh, it, it's always my uh, sort of tradition that I make sure I have time to pray on New Year's Eve, and I meditate some on New Year's Eve and start to think about the year ahead. And then on New Year's Day, I do the same thing. I pray again. I meditate. I think about the new year ahead. And I'd love to tell you that when I went to bed New Year's Eve, I was certain that I would wake up a different person on New Year's Day. And when I woke up New Year's Day, I felt remarkably like the person who went to bed the night before. <laughs> Which is always a little disappointing because part of me was just so, so sure I was going to wake up and everything was going to be different, like COVID was completely going to be gone, everybody was going to be nice and patient, and we were all going to be friends again. And it didn't happen. And I was like, oh, boy, why? Well, based on what we teach, it didn't happen because there hasn't been a fundamental shift in my consciousness, and I haven't kept that consciousness shifted. So I think, hmm, if it's a new year and there's a new me, how is that going to be? And it's going to be, it's going to start, of course, with a decision based on who I am. 
and, and also, and why I'm here. Because I think I can't go any further without thinking about those things. Who am I? Why am I here? So when I ask this question, of course, it's for all of us. Who we are is we are each individualized, unique emanations of divine. Maybe one way to say this is we're God's kids, or we are all thoughts in the mind of God. But the definite thing is we are emanations of divine consciousness. Now, why are we here? Hmm. Well, I know everybody thinks they've got different reasons why they're here, but I think the big picture is here is that we are here to express the energy of God that is within us. What is God? God is love. All right, so we are here to express love. So I am an expression of God's love. That's who I am. And I am here to give that love as generously and lavishly as I can to the world around me. Ah. Oh. I had this realization that we look for ways and excuses to withhold love. It goes absolutely contrary the purpose to the purpose for which we have been born. You know, it's counter to our divine purpose. I think it was Howard Thurman who said that there are two questions a person has to ask themselves. Where am I going and who's going with me? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think it's great at the beginning of the year to ask, for both, ask ourselves both of those things. Where am I going? Well, I'm going into a new year. What does that mean? All right, I have a clean slate to practice everything I've been learning. That's what it is. I have, I have this perfect clean slate, a year that is untarnished, and I get to practice all the stuff I've been learning and working on and studying and praying and meditating. You know, I was talking with a friend the other day, and I said, you know, the purpose of religion really is to teach people morality, because this is how consciousness evolves. You know, if you think about it, in uh, the time of the Buddha, the Buddha gave the Eightfold Path, this teaching for people to follow. And what it was, it was a way for people to have like a, a litmus test of their, of their morality. And then, you know, Moses goes up on the mountain and he gets the Ten Commandments. And he comes back with, do this and don't do this. Honor this and don't honor, you know, he, he's got the rules for people to live by. <laughs> so people need this morality to be able to advance in consciousness. The goal is not the morality, the goal is the advancement in consciousness. So a new year is, yes, it's a great time to remember who we truly are. Now, it's also a good time to remember who you're not. You're not your past, you're not your stuff, you're not the mistakes, you're not the things you've done that you wish you hadn't done and all that kind of stuff. Then, then who am I? Who you and I are is we are each emanations of divine consciousness. We are perfect expressions in the mind of God. So what you are is you are a creation of God because you were created by God. Okay, well, great. Well, we teach God is all there is. So the energy of love is all there is. That means God is present everywhere. And thoughts of love, that means that thoughts of love are present everywhere. So all the attributes of God are within you and within me. That's what we teach in the science of mind. This is why, because all of God's attributes are within you and within me, we are children of God. I have this ongoing conversation with my brother and sister. Uh, our parents are gone now. And we talk about how qualities and attributes of our parents show up in us again and again and again. And sometimes we know them, and sometimes we're a little surprised, like, oh, I didn't know. I just had a moment the other day where I was just channeling mom all over the place. I mean, mom was just channeling away, just kind of her energy was coming through me. I heard myself saying stuff that she used to say. Isn't that always surprising? When you hear something come out of your mouth and go, oh, my God, that wasn't me. That was my father. That was my mother. But, but I, that just shows us how, how we've been programmed. So, all right, so if I'm not my past and I'm not my stuff and I'm not my mistakes, then who am I? We are all perfect ideas in the infinite mind of God. And God is present. When we say that God is present, that means that love is present in our thinking. It's not any harder than that. That love is present in our thinking. So all of the attributes of God exist in each of us, right? So God is perfect love. I don't know about you, but it doesn't always feel like perfect love is what's happening in me. But I'm trying, but I'm really working on it. You know, I realize that we are not taught as children that we are already perfect, right? We're told that we're on the way there. If I, you know, as a kid, you know, if you put your toys back in the toy box, you're, you're good. Or if you get a good grade in your report card, you're good. But we're not taught that who we are as a being is essentially perfect. And what I mean by that is that who we are is enough, that who we are is whole, 
Who we are doesn't need to have anything added to us in order to make us okay. We are essentially and fundamentally perfect right now. Now, that doesn't mean that we're great and other people are not. Because when I say that we are perfect, I mean that about everybody on the face of the planet. Everybody is a perfect expression of the one life and the one love. You know, our subconscious mind works according to our conscious belief. So, so this is quite simple. If I think I'm not much, our subconscious mind is going to run with that. Right? But if by the same token I say, you know, I am here as a unique expression of God, and I'm here to express that love in everything I think, say, and do, at least that's my goal, well, then that will be a different outcome. We have to recognize that you are already the infinite power of God's love that is within you. You are already, you are that. You are the infinite power of God's love, and that love exists within you right now, fully orbed. So science of mind says, you know, if you go deep enough, if we would go deep enough in consciousness, in our spiritual work, we would really get that we are all one. Because I know it looks like you end over there and I end over here. You know, but if we go deep enough in consciousness, we would realize, oh my God, not only are we all connected, we are in fact all one. You know, I hear people talk a lot, and, and I do it too, about this idea of boundaries, you know? This was one of the things I was meditating on, I guess, uh, yesterday morning a little bit. And, um, and I have certainly heard myself say, I need to have better boundaries here. Or I'll tell people, you need to have boundaries in that situation and stuff like that. Or, or, and we've, uh, how many times have we thought, oh, I have somebody in my life and they just don't respect my boundaries? So in thinking about this, I realized that there's a level where this whole boundary thing is something that we made up. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't have them, but realize we made that whole notion up. You know, I, it occurs to me, whenever I've seen like um, images on TV from like the, the space shuttles and things like that, the thing that always, always has struck me is that when you look at Earth from outer space, in fact, you don't even have to get up that high. You know, 30,000 feet will do. You know, so next time you're on American Airlines, just take a peek out the window. And you see, there are actually no boundaries between us and other countries. There are no boundaries between states. And although we put up fences between your yard and my yard, there are actually technically no natural boundaries there. They think, oh my God, I've made up all that stuff. So I started to run with this. And so I started thinking about, well, you know, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the problem, that I'm so committed to my boundaries that if I let my boundaries down, it's possible that everything would actually be a little more harmonious. I know, I think if I let, if I let my boundaries down, I'm going to be totally consumed. I'll be devoured. There'll be nothing left. I'll give all I have, you know? And, and it's not that way. What if it is actually just completely the opposite, that by not being guarded all the time and protecting myself all the time, that what actually happens from that is, you know, the walls go down and the love that is within us just starts to flow. I mean, that, no, that would be interesting. I think that would be a really interesting experiment because I don't think we've actually really done that yet. You know, when we choose other than love, it seems to me that we leave paradise. We leave the garden. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way we choose to see things always, always comes back to us. You know, so, so as I go into a new year, one of the things is I want to look at people and see them how do I want to see them? I want to see them as the divine being I know they are. I want to see them as completely innocent. See, this is what we do. We look at people and then we say, yeah, but they did this, or yeah, but they said that, but yeah, but they're this, and yeah, but we're that. And so we find all these reasons to see them as other than perfect expressions of the one life. And I think the way out is to see everybody including ourselves, as perfect expressions of the one life. See, God is the answer to every problem the moment it occurs, right? The moment we have a problem, God is the answer. Um, I was talking with another friend a couple of weeks back, and we were having this discussion around that so many people have been depressed. And what we came to, really, as the solution to this, I believe, and it wasn't me, I was on the receiving end of this wisdom, was that people are most often depressed because they're not giving their attention to the divine on a consistent basis. And when you find yourself being depressed, what you need to do is give your attention to the divine rather than give your attention to all the reasons why you're so depressed. 
right? This is, and, and, and you know, I know when I feel depressed, the thing I do not want to do is sit down and pray. When I feel a little depressed, I don't want to meditate. I don't want to go outside and feel the sun on my face and say, thank you, God, for illuminating all darkness in my consciousness and eradicating it. That's not what I want to do. Right? But I know it's the thing I have to do. It's what I have to do. People um, love to ask when they hear that I'm involved in church. <laughs> they always ask me, it's like, well, have you been saved? Uh, um, now, what I think is true is that when we are thinking with love, we are in heaven. And when we are thinking without love, we are in hell. And when people ask me that, the scale is so tipped for me to go the way I know I don't want to go. Because what I think in my own mind, and I believe this is true of science of mind, is, is that there's nothing we need to be saved from except our own negative thinking. Our own thinking turned against us, our own thinking used against us, because our thinking is the most powerful thing that God has given us to work with to evolve and heal and grow our life. Right? So if your thinking is in the toilet, then no wonder your experience is only worth flushing. I'm sorry, you know, I'm, but really, you know. So the only power is our own mental power. And all thought creates form at some level, right? So every thought we think is creating form somewhere, somewhere. Now, often we have to think things for a long time before they burst forth into physical manifestation because we understand that physical manifestation is the last level of manifestation. What I mean by that is we cultivate a consciousness and we cultivate a consciousness, and then that consciousness becomes our consciousness, and we add to that consciousness, and we feed that consciousness, and then ultimately the last thing is there is a physical demonstration out here in the physical world. But that's the last thing to happen. I don't know why. It's funny to me that we get so surprised when we see this demonstration out here in the world, and we act like, oh, how did that happen? You know, it's like, well, it had everything to do with your thinking, your believing, your visualizing, your behaving, what you were saying, what you were expecting of life. We have everything to do with that, I believe. And so if I am thinking, let's just say non-loving thoughts, okay? Yeah, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. And rather than, so I think this is my approach. Ernest Holmes used to say this. He'd say, I want to be a person who is for something and against nothing. And I think that's extraordinarily powerful, to be a for something and against nothing. Because the evil of the world, we try to fight it, but, but that is not the answer. You know, what we have to do is be, be the answer, right? That, and I think a way to do this is say, all right, spirit, show me how I'm the answer here. It's that simple. Hmm. Here's a situation, doesn't look good. All right, spirit, God within, presence of the Most High, show me how I'm the answer here, right? Because I think we have to be the world we want, right? I mean, we can't keep waiting. You know, I've, I've started to hear this conversation about, well, the world is in trouble now. It's up to the kids to fix it. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not. You know, I remember um, reading Years ago, I'm really dating myself, and I'm embarrassed to say this a little bit, uh, but uh, many, some of you, well, maybe one or two of you will remember <laughs> that, that there was metaphysical uh, material years ago uh, from Jane Roberts, the Seth material. Uh, and, and I got a lot out of that. That was really part of my early introduction into metaphysics. And, um, and I remember reading in that, and this has always stayed with me, that the generation that brings peace will not be the generation that hates war, right? Seems pretty simple. The generation that brings peace will not be the generation that hates war. It will be a generation that loves peace. And so I think, all right, if I go with that, then that's true in every area. You know, because what you resist, you actually perpetuate. If you actively are resisting, you know, don't think about the Eiffel Tower. Don't think about the Eiffel Tower. Don't think about the Eiffel Tower. All I can think about is the Eiffel Tower. Oh, my God, get out of my head. Right? So, yes, we often attract what we're afraid of, but we also attract what we love. So think of that both, that sometimes, because it's what we focus on, we attract the things that we are absolutely afraid of. All right, let's stop that right now. But by the same token, also, we also attract more of what we love. Because if we're giving some of our good energy and attention there, that is also an extraordinary blessing. 
So the more love in our lives, the more, how do I say it? The more we allow ourselves to be a transparency for love in the world, the more attractive we become as like a magnet for good things to come to us. See? So in a sense, it's out of self-interest. I want to be loving out of self-interest because I will have a better life. But I also know the way the principle works is that I will be helping to contribute to the world being a better place. See, I, I come back to this again and again. And, and for me, it's so big, I, I, I've been like wrapping my head around it for, for a very long time, that each of us, we are right now the beloved of God. And, and I think that's a lot to take in, that you are so loved by God right now, warts and all. You know, God absolutely loves you. That's why you're here. That's why God created you, because you are so loved, right? And so I think the enlightened, the enlightened people love based on what people are. You know, there is um, a lot to be said for acceptance. One, it's not easy. <laughs> Two, it's a good idea. <laughs> you know, that, that the enlightened people that have walked on the planet before us, I believe they love based on just, oh, here's somebody new to love. Here's somebody new to love. I remember when um, my nephew told me uh, a couple of years back, just, just two years back, because she just had a birthday, that, um, that they were pregnant again. And I was like, oh my God, that's great. I'm so excited. I can't wait. He said, you haven't even met the child yet. And I said, doesn't matter. It's somebody new to love. You know, what a great thing. We're going to have a new person come forward as part of our family and completely unlike anything we've known before, this unique individual is our opportunity to love. And, and you know, and I think it's just so extraordinary to think about like, okay, this person wasn't even here before and now this person is. Where did all that love come from that we can shower on this beautiful little person now? Where did that come from? It came from within us. Well, where was it? It was always there. It was always there. But this new little life came into our family, and it was like, oh my God, it gave us all permission to sort of um, empty our pockets of all the love that we'd been holding on to and hadn't been willing to distribute yet. You know? And I think that's just such an incredible thing. You know, so if we would remember that we are the beloved of God, and the beloved only wants to give us only intends to give us, in fact, only does give us things that would add to our life in a healthy way, add to our life in a good way. I think for the new year, I want to see through the eyes of love, not through the eyes of the world, because the eyes of the world will always separate. And I think through the eyes of love, it's always about how connected we are, how one we are. Remember who we are and why we came here. Who am I? I'm a unique valuable expression of love. And I came here to give that love in my own unique way in every area of my life and everything I touch. So I like the word invoke. Invoke means to call forth. And so I think here we are at the beginning of a new year, we get to invoke, call forth, call forth the best that is within us for the year ahead. You know, every time we meet, it's God meeting God. Isn't that great? It's like, hey, God, how you doing? God, good to see you. Hey, God, how's it hanging? Like, oh, it's hanging good, yeah. Oh, that. You know? And so God helped me to see the goodness, the love, the innocence in other people because if I'm focusing on something other than that, the problem isn't in them. It's something in my perception. It's something in my viewing. So God helped me to see the goodness, the love, the innocence in other people. Oh, and also in me. You know, so Christmas, Christmas is a lot about the rebirth within us. But that rebirth doesn't happen just one time a year. Christmas is every moment when we allow to be born from within us, you know, the realization that, that we are the beloved of God, that we are innocent, that we are whole, that we are perfect, and that we carry all the power of the universe within us. So let's turn our attention inward now for a moment. We'll do a little bit of inner work together. And I want to start with some words from, from Ernest Holmes, OK? So close your eyes and bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. 
So yes, it's a new year, it's a new you. And we start with those questions of where am I going and who will go with me? So from the writings of Ernest Holmes, I know that I am in the Spirit of God. And I know that the Spirit of God is in me. I know that this Spirit is complete and perfect. And therefore, it must be complete and perfect in me. And I know that the Spirit is now operating in my affairs. It's manifesting its beauty and harmony in everything that I do. And I know that my body is a body of spiritual ideas manifesting in form. I know that every organ of my body, being a manifestation of pure spirit, contains within itself a pattern of joy, peace, and divine order, of harmony and complete perfection. I know the same truth for all of my relationships, that there is divine perfection unfolding in anything that does not serve me, no matter how long I have dragged it along with me, whether it's a thought, an idea, a belief, a behavior pattern, if it does not serve me, I surrender it now. I surrender it to the light, to the love, to the spirit of the one life, knowing that in the light, all darkness ceases. So I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is a raising up in consciousness. And so we think of our family members and friends, parents and children, everyone that we hold near and dear. And we wrap our spiritual arms around them. We know that they are emanations of God's light and love, just as we are. And we are blessed to be on the journey because we are on the journey with the right and perfect people for us. So we let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So we imagine a light emanating out from our heart, surrounding the globe, including all people everywhere, blessing all situations, particularly the difficult ones, but also remembering that God is present in all of it. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. We release our word into the law of mind, knowing it's done. And so it is, and so we let it be. Together we all say, Amen. All right. One time. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. It's climbing clear up to the sky. 
Well, I said, oh, what a beautiful morning. Yes, what a wonderful day. I've got a beautiful feeling. I got everything. Everything's going my way. Like statues, the cattle are standing like statues. They don't turn their head when they see me right by. But a little brown maverick is winking her eye. She says, Oh, what a beautiful morning! Yes, what a wonderful day. Thank you. And you can get her music. Just She tells me if you just Google her name, then your whole computer, your whole awareness, your whole digital environment will be populated with her. Um, one more time. Randy Landis, thank you very much for playing bass. Sinclair Lott, thank you for being on the drums. Sam Krieger, our director, thank you, sir. And Karen Smith, welcome back. All right, and if you like them, they'll be back again in a month. So we want to encourage your, your demonstrable support of them so that we can have them back again because they do this for a living. I, so I'm, I'm being really subtle here, right? Okay. And by the way, the ways you can make donations to our church, you can call the office at 818-762-7566. You can go to nhcrs.org slash give. You can also text the word give to 818-457-3419. Uh, so a couple of announcements besides that I want to give you. You can pray with a practitioner after this service in person, or you can also, for those of you who are live streaming, you can do that on Zoom. Um, if this is your first time at our church, we are so glad that you are here. So you can join us on the patio afterwards for coffee and let us love you. Let us know who you are so we can love you up. All right. Wednesday evening, this week, um, 
Joanne O'Brien is going to be back with Tizay and Potluck. Oh, come on now. There you go. And you know what she, her mantra is, there will be pie. So yes, there will be pie. Bring your favorite dish to share. Um, the meditation begins at 6.50, that's 6.50, and the service starts at 7. And yes, that is on Zoom and Facebook Live. Uh, our youth church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service, and we welcome youth of all ages. The men's group is meeting today in the Ernest Holmes room and on Zoom. Uh, women's group will be meeting in February, first Sunday in February, which is February 6th, so they're not going to be meeting today. Um, oh, the blanket drive for the homeless. We've been doing this for the last several weeks. It's been going really, really well. Today is the last day we're collecting new and clean used blankets for the homeless. So you can drop the blankets off in the red bins outside the sanctuary, and I believe Michael Flott has been standing, loving everyone who gives the blankets and so we're grateful. So thank you for doing that. The distribution will happen today. If you want to know some more information about this, then would you do me a favor and call Gilda Gomez? And her number is 818-383-0453. Or stop by the table where those blankets are, and Michael will give you that information. And you can connect with her, because she's also the one who takes charge of feeding the homeless, which we do. And we're really glad that we're able to do that. And we want you to participate in that. Um, 2022 goal sheets are available on the patio and on our website. Please complete self-address and stamp that envelope and return it to the goals box or to the church if you access it online. And we're going to mail it back to you in December of 2022. Uh, this Saturday, January 8th from 10 to 1, will be our 2022 goal setting workshop with Reverend Sidney Sting. You can join me in person or on Zoom. For, it's a really powerful and productive workshop. Um, we will be doing visioning, visualization, and journaling. And the idea is that we reveal and we clarify the highest intentions and greatest visions for our lives. And we move forward into 2022. You know what I like to say, what happens in 2021 stays in 2021. <laughs> So you can sign up on the website today. It's $35. The Quick Start Science of Mind class with Dr. Mark is happening starting January 16th. And that's January 16th, 23rd, and the 30th, 12 to 1.30. It's going to be on Zoom only. So you can come to church here, go home, fix yourself a sandwich, and watch that. And then that way, if you are interested in being more active in this church and joining this church, you get to know what it is we talk about and what we teach and what we stand for. Um, it's an introduction to the background and basic pr principles of religious science. And it is a required class to become a member of the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And it's free. Oh, my gosh. But the blessings that will come back to you multiplied uh, abundantly. Amazing. Our bookstore is open today for 30 minutes after the service, please stop by. Uh, we have a Zoom, for those of you live streaming, the Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation, oh my goodness, every Monday through Saturday at 8 o'clock. You can get the link from the website, and it's wonderful to be in spiritual practice with others online. It's very, very powerful. Um, Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain all the links and more information about everything that's going on and to sign up for e-blasts and newsletters. And I'm going to stop talking. Let's sing the peace song. Let's stand up. <laughs>
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.